Welcome, welcome. Isn't it true that Ottawa is a wonderful place to work, play, and do business? Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for that great introduction. I'm Rosie Edda. I just want to quickly introduce our panel and then let you know why we are here. So first off, we've got Nina Kressler, President and CEO of the Shaw Center. Nina, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Leslie McKay, Vice President, Meetings and Major Events, Ottawa Tourism. Leslie, welcome. And Sonia Shorey, Vice President, Strategy, Marketing and Communications at Invest Ottawa. Sonia, welcome. Okay. We're really, really excited to be here. This is part of our Think Ottawa panel here at Hub 350. It's our partner event. And uh, what we're doing is we're going to have a dynamic discussion about Ottawa as a global tech and business hub. Today, we're going to explore our unique differentiators and how we can put these strengths to work to attract new domestic and global events to our region, propelling tourism, investment, and economic opportunities right here in Canada's capital. And as we continue to navigate the uncertain times, because let's be honest, there are some uh, things that are happening right now that are kind of shifting the market, the tech market, that has a lot of people wondering where we're headed, the economy as well. Um, it, uh, it, we've got inflation that, well, not so much run away anymore, but it has people wondering about their jobs and, and tech companies that are starting to lay people off. So where are we headed? We're going to talk about that today. And um, these uncertain times, they are unprecedented, and it has never been more critical for us to come together as a community and take collaborative action to drive our economy and our economic recovery and long-term growth. So we're going to discuss some specific ways we can achieve the objective, beginning with the novel Think Ottawa campaign. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this discussion. I have a few questions for our panelists, and then we'll open it up. We're going to speak for about 20, 25 minutes and uh, get this discussion going. So since we don't have that much time, we're going to get right into it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to sit. I think I might stand. I'll feel it out right now. <laughs> um, but I think what I want to straight up do is um, go to you, Leslie. Okay. Um, why don't we start here? Ottawa Tourism. We got to talk about uh, you've been bringing in visitors, tours, media, conventions to Ottawa and Canada's capital region now for, what, over 50 years. We know that the last three years have been dicey, have been really tough. The pandemic has hit, it's not just Ottawa, but it has been difficult for the past three years, very challenging for the tourism sector. So we're really grateful for your leadership now on initiatives such as Think Ottawa. And perhaps you could share why Ottawa Tourism chose to invest in the development of Think Ottawa. Absolutely. Thanks, Rosie. Thank and thank you all for being here and your interest into why tourism is here today. Um, it would seem intuitive to some, but it really uh, isn't um, always first uh, top of mind in our industry um, and in your industries to think of bringing a convention to Ottawa. We're always very happy to hop on a plane and go somewhere to a new destination and discover it. And that's great. We want you to do that. Um, but what it does when you are able to lead bringing a conference to Ottawa is it really allows us to put Ottawa on the world stage. So not only just from academic, um, the, obviously the research and development that's happening in the region, um, it also attracts people to the destination that maybe wouldn't have otherwise come. And then when they get here, they sort of look around and go, oh, this is a really nice place. And, you know, I wonder what job opportunities are here. And, you know, the more conferences that we hold, the better infrastructure we we can build to support it, um, even on the sporting event side. It really just helps um, all around. It keeps our, our kids employed in restaurants. They, uh, you know, take taxis and stay in hotel rooms. And all of that just affects our visitor economy. And, and a lot of those tax dollars stay here and benefit us as Ottawa citizens. So, yeah. Very great points there for you. Um, I have another question for you. Um, could you provide us with an overview of of this 
collaborative campaign? Yeah. So many destinations around the world, almost virtually every one, um, does have an ambassador program of sorts. So typically that's, we look for um, business leaders in the community. We look for um, university professors, researchers uh, who are involved in international organizations or international work. And so, uh, you know, with that, we're like, okay, that's great. We, we do a good job at uncovering those people. But there was something really unique about these three organizations is, um, you know, one, we purpose built uh, the Shaw Centre to host uh, in Canada's capital. So I think that's really important. And Nina uh, will be able to elaborate on her building in just a moment. Um, but, you know, all the work that Invest Ottawa and the hub here in Canada, North BIA, like everybody was working towards this the same goal. And so it just seemed um, like, why wouldn't we band together, you know, and really help amplify all of our messaging? So would we meet with people and organizations all across the world, we can take that message, um, whether it be from the park here or whether it be from Invest Ottawa, investment trade, we're able to really elevate those conversations with those organizations and inform them about what's happening. We don't just speak about what hotels are here and what attractions. Yes, that's part of our messaging, but we're, we, we just are able to really deliver and hit home what they can experience here, what they'll see here, who they're going to meet here, what speakers might be available to them. And uh, that really elevates Ottawa in our international competition. So um, we, we have been rewarded very generously by a lot of ambassadors here in Ottawa, and we, we hope that this is an economy that you will help us grow. Thank you, Nina. I want to move on to you. Um, thank you, Leslie. I want to move on to you, Nina. Um, first off, um, the Shaw Centre is certainly one of the many ways Ottawa punches above its weight. And sincere congratulations to you and the Shaw Center for, uh, well, for receiving, being awarded the world's best convention center by the International Association of Conference Centers last year. Big round of applause. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty impressive, really. Um, it's really uh, an amazing accomplishment, particularly in the midst of this challenging time. I mean, we're just in the thick of things last year. So when you consider this award and the experience you're creating for stakeholders every day, what do you believe makes the Shaw Center so unique? What's your secret sauce? Thank you, Rosie, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm not sure it's a secret sauce, but it, it really goes down to sometimes just the basics. And, and I would say the first thing, and it's an old term, but it's empowering our staff to do what's right at the right time and in the moment. You know, things can go off, off the kilter at any time when you're hosting thousands of people in your business. And it's, it's the option and the empowerment of staff to quickly to respond to something when, when they see the need is greater to do that. And I'll give you a, a very, very simple example of it, but it was one that we were recognized for a lot. On average, when you have 5,000 people, let's say, in a very large meeting space, we turn the temperature down because it gets warm very quickly. But women tend to get colder faster than men, and then, of course, we start to hear, can you turn the temperature up? And that's very difficult, and it doesn't turn on a dime. It takes, you know, a half an hour to 45 minutes. So we have this Pajmina program now that, you know, all the staff carry, you know, these beautiful Shaw-branded blue Pajminas, and if anybody's cold, rather than turning up the heat, we give them the Pajmina. They keep it, they take it away from it, so it's a little branding branding opportunity for us when people you know, leave the Shaw Center and leave Ottawa. Uh, so there's, that's just one of the very small things. I would also say some of our CSR programs are somewhat unique. They, they are international and they are uh, close to home. So close to home, we certainly do a lot with our local food bank and our shelters. Um, so whenever possible, we are donating, you know, leading into the pandemic. Naturally, we would have had a freezer full of a lot of food and a lot of inventory. Um, so we were happy that we were able to make a significant donation, you know, to the local shelters and to the food banks. But also from afar, we, we, we have these fun little programs that we work with. Um, every organization has uh, lanyards. They have bags that they give to their, their delegates. And they just end up in the landfill. But we did work with a young man that I became good friends with from Cameroon. And he said to me, if you guys would pay for the shipping of this back to Africa, I have a use for these lanyards and I have a use for these delegate bags. 
And, and so we did, and I should have actually submitted a picture because it's the cutest one of these children. Hold, they have their lanyards, and they put their cell phones in it. And they were holding these big signs, thank you, Shaw Center. Uh, so it was really close to, dear, dear to my heart, and I, and I think those are the little things that we can do to help get things out of landfill and take them to areas in the country that really have an appreciation or a need for it. So I think that's a few of the little things mm. we do. And can you elaborate on the effects that Think Ottawa has had on the Shaw Centre? Give us some highlights, if you will. Oh, well, for sure. I mean, this summer we just recently hosted the International Association of Firefighters and the International Society of Biomechanics. And typically, summer from a meetings perspective is softer in July and August. Um, but our international events that come through Think Ottawa tend have a tendency to meet in July and August. Um, so I can tell you, when the firefighters were in town, I think Leslie can attest to this too, I mean, every restaurant was full, every bar was full, the retail outlets in the Rideau Centre, they were busy, and the firefighters absolutely loved Ottawa. In fact, they said it was one of their best conventions ever, and, you know, we're very proud of that because they, they travel all around the world. Uh, next year, we have a solid roster of international, we have the international uh, pediatric oncologists coming to town. We have IEEE sections. We have, again, very many internationals that will fill our calendar in our hotels in July and August. And, you know, it's important, uh, you know, to ensure that we have eggs in all of our baskets. And what I mean by that, if tourism, leisure tourism is really strong, but if for whatever reason it could fall off, it's good to have the group market too. So, you know, we have a good mix of, of leisure visitors in Ottawa in the summertime, and now the conventions will help fill the space as well. So that's what Think Ottawa does for us. Thanks, Nina. I'm going to move on to you, Sonia Shori. Invest Ottawa is a leading economic development in development agency for knowledge-based industries facilitating economic growth and job creation in Ottawa. So I know firsthand how passionate you are about the many ways Ottawa punches above its weight in the international market, but I'm wondering, Sonia, if you could describe Ottawa's strengths as a global technology and business hub for our audience. Thank you so much, Rosie. I'm looking out at this audience. I feel like I'm in a group of friends. It's so wonderful yeah. to see everyone here. I'm almost taken aback. And congratulations, Jamie, to the entire Canada North team. Amazing event, and congratulations on your one-year anniversary for Hub 350. Um, you know, there was a big report released yesterday. Ottawa broke the top 100 cities in the world list that was released. We're number Woo! 96, of course. We made it, yes. We made it. And everyone in this room knows we are the best city in the world. The world just needs to catch up. That's right. And truly, what was really powerful about that was the attributes that they were bringing forward in the summary of Ottawa. We are a collaborative, diverse, global tech hub that punches so far above its weight internationally. We are so passionate about collaborating with everyone in this room, all of our Think Ottawa partners, and all citizens of Ottawa to help raise that message. Let's start with a few statistics. Almost 1,800 technology companies 88,000 tech workers. That's public sector and private sector. Uh, number one top talent concentration in all of North America, three years running from CBRE ahead of Silicon Valley. Our total workforce is 11.6 tech workers. In the Valley, it's 11.3. 61% of our workforce has a post-secondary degree. In that report yesterday, and it was echoed, it was even higher in the CBRE report, our post-secondary institutions are second to none. They are world leading. It was number 15 in global educational attainment in yesterday's report, and in CBRE, it's 10. That is our future. That is the pipeline of next generation technology and business talent, and we are so grateful and so fortunate to have them here. 65 government labs that focus on different areas of disruptive technologies that fuse with those graduates, with the technology companies. A startup ecosystem where we are raising major capital and breaking into new markets. Companies like Ascent in the East End are doing marvelous things in supply chain management. These are remarkable achievements and they are just examples of what we can achieve as a collaborative ecosystem. We are so passionate about this because we do things differently. When we collaborate, great things happen. And I'm particularly passionate, of course, about Ariex.0, which is a major collaboration with Invest Ottawa 
Ottawa, all three levels of government, a host of multinationals, including many anchored here in the park, BlackBerry, QNX, and 200 million cars worldwide, major leader anchoring our cluster here with 100 organizations driving smart mobility innovation, Nokia and Ericsson, 90% of the industry-led telecom R&D happens in this city, and again, anchored much here in the technology park, the largest of its kind in Canada, another major asset, together with Accenture, Microsoft, Avanade, the post-secondary institutions, the National Capital Commission. We have a private track in the Greenbelt where tests that cannot be conducted safely on city streets or in the air are happening with low-speed automated shuttles, connected and autonomous vehicles, drones. We're attracting new companies, investments, startups, scale-ups, multinationals there are collaborating on the smart mobility innovations of the future, and we're working with regulators in the public sector, like Transport Canada, that are helping them to drive closer to adoption by being a part of the validation, testing, and demonstration. Here in the park, we have our public test facility where we are working on the smart intersection of the future, again, with the City of Ottawa, Transport Canada, and a host of small to medium-sized companies that will keep all of us safe when we're walking in those intersections with our dogs, with children, when we're cycling. It's going to make the world safer, and that's being driven out of Ottawa. And the last thing I want to say is diversity, equity, and inclusion was a big highlight of yesterday's report. I know my friend Julia Elvidge, co-founder, together with Jennifer Francis and I and Sheboot, helping to drive greater opportunity for women leaders, founders, and business owners, and broader diversity, equity, and inclusion whether it's helping women founders to acquire investment, to start companies, to move up into the executive ranks. That report also noted one in four in our workforce are immigrants here in Ottawa. That is incredible because we need more talent. And I know that has been a theme woven through today that we'll be chatting about more. Mm, thank you for that, Sonia. Um, yeah, that is incredible numbers. And to see the, those autonomous vehicles being tested, I've, I've witnessed that. It's really something to behold. There is a lot of technology happening in and around the city. Um, I do have another question for you. How is Think Ottawa, how is it impacting um, the city's economy and community? If we don't collaborate as we come out of this pandemic with so much uncertainty in our economy and in our industry and in our world, we are gonna fall behind. And so the opportunity to join forces and become what I'll call a promotional army that's unified, that's collaborative, that is driving that message. We're driving business, we're attracting talent, we're attracting investment. When people come to visit and they're staying at our hotels and they're attending conferences like SAS Norse where we will be in full force with many of you at the Shaw Center with Nina tomorrow and Thursday. You know, it drives all of that talent. It creates new opportunity. Companies are seeing what's possible here. They're experiencing all of you. They're experiencing the infrastructure. They're hearing about the deep technological capabilities that we have. There are so many impacts that are far beyond that moment in time where we have people who are here partaking in a conference, building business relationships, and hopefully driving business, commercial opportunity, exports, and investment for that one company. They're realizing that Ottawa is a hotbed of talent and opportunity where they can achieve something they can't anywhere else in the world and make an impact on the world with the kinds of innovators we have. I think Ottawa promotes that. It is much yeah. larger than a campaign. Okay, I want to go to you, Leslie, and ask you this. Leslie's with Ottawa Tourism. And ask you this, what types of events have we attracted to the region since the launch of Think Ottawa. Yeah, so uh, I think Nina mentioned a, a few of them, but we, we really concentrate on a lot of IEEE uh, conferences, which I know uh, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, Nina mentioned the IEEE Sections Congress, which is coming here in August 2023, and uh, that brings together the heads of every section uh, within uh, IEEE across the globe. And being able to host something like that just really does put us on the world map. It's a very competitive field. Um, we do have uh, you know, many international conferences. Some of them tie into the work that the government's doing. So if you're doing anything with the government, uh, as I always say, follow the money. Let's put pressure on them to bring these world conferences. We see our leaders currently attending a conference uh, around the globe. Why can't that be here? And that's where we need you to uh, help us sort of identify those opportunities. We do a lot of the work. Emily, my colleague here, uh, she just say hi. Um, you know, we 
we once we sort of uncover it, you, you don't need to figure out if it fits here or, you know, what it would look like. We'll do all that sourcing. We just sort of need the introduction, maybe the RFP, and then we can uh, we can take a look and see if it's something that we can go after. Um, we do all the bid books. We will help with the bid run, the presentation, um, and that's all complimentary uh, as a service from Ottawa Tourism. So you don't need to copy and paste off of Google uh, about Ottawa's air access and all that. Like we have all of that uh, documentation, presentations, all of it's all cooked, ready to go so that you can really concentrate on mobilizing your colleagues in the specific area of that conference to garner their support to support the conference, which is really important. And, uh, and then also, um, you know, trying to figure out what that conference would look like here from, from a content perspective, speaker perspective. We let you sort of you know, concentrate on the area that you know best and uh, let us do the, uh, the sourcing and pricing and availability for you to consider. Leslie, I want to ask you about the team at Ottawa Tourism because it's a, it's a group of passionate people. The work that you do um, and so dedicated to this city, which I think is so gorgeous and has every potential to be, we were number 95, number 96. We, you know, number one, easily. Um, can you talk a little bit about your team? Yeah, so I, I lead the meetings and conventions and major events, which is the, any big sporting or cultural events that come to the city, and obviously the, the meetings attraction aside. But we do a lot of marketing. Some of it you don't see because we typically market to outside of Ottawa for people to come and visit. But during the pandemic, we did have to uh, adjust some of that to uh, to try and stimulate the, the economy, obviously. But, um, you know, a lot of the work that we do um, is on place branding, for example. So if we have an Ottawa playbook that is available to you online, and it, it's basically a lexicon of, of how we should speak about Ottawa and, um, you know, how your... Um, you know, Twitter handles are managed in terms of how you relate to Ottawa, what you say about it, how you say it. And if we all start speaking in the same language, it really does amplify the messaging about Ottawa and we'll be able to, to really move the needle. Uh, we have such an approachable sized community. There's very little that you can't get done in this community by one or two phone calls. Um, and so I think that the opportunity is ours to take advantage. Like what if we were the tech meeting capital of the world and at big or small, it doesn't need to be a 5,000 person conference. We have hotels and meeting space infrastructure to fit all sizes. So, um, you know, I think it just together, if, if we start putting some of those on the calendar, it can make a big difference. Nina, we know that it is critical that uh, to revitalize our downtown core. Ottawa has, downtown Ottawa has been through a lot uh, with COVID uh, and uh, a lot of bodies are not there, that used to be there just a few years ago. Some businesses are suffering. Um, can, how can Think Ottawa help improve that situation looking forward to the economic future of downtown Ottawa? Well, thank you for that question. It is an important one. And I, and I think, you know, Think Ottawa will and does make a difference because, again, when we start to attract back the bigger conferences, both domestically and international. And I will say, next year, we will have hit our pre-pandemic event load. So we are back to where we were. And once we That's have those- That's fantastic. Yes, thank you. And once we have people back in the downtown core, they will be staying in the hotels. They will be traveling by taxi. They will be coming in from the airport because think Ottawa as well. Um, as it begins to attract more internationals, you know, we are challenged right now with flight availability into Ottawa. So what, com what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And so if we can prove that there is a requirement for more airlift into Ottawa, then I think that will provide the airlines with some great data and a reason why to, you know, increase capacity into the city. So I think everything we do around uh, Think Ottawa is is critical. I think it's critical. Leslie pointed out, you know, it, it, it exposes people to our destination who may decide to live here, to go to school here, to go to university, um, vacation here. So it's it's beyond just a convention. It, it has so, it's such a deep ecosystem mm -hmm. of so many touch points. So I, I think, you know, that 
That is what we have to continue on, and I think that will change the revitalization of our downtown. And, and let's be honest, when business travelers come to town, they're on business, so they have business accounts, they spend more money, they stay longer, and on often, often cases, they will attach some vacation time to their visit because they may not have had an opportunity to come to Ottawa before. So we, we, have, we have a lot of work to do. We are in a very competitive environment with everybody vying on the same big associations and corporations, but we are punching well above our weight in that, and uh, we're on a good course for the future. Thank you for that, Nina. Um, Sonia with Invest Ottawa, I have another question for you. Um, so when we're looking at uh, the campaign and the associated community collaboration, why is it so critical during these unpredictable times? Think Ottawa's campaign. So we're doing our strategic plan refresh right now. We've engaged many people in this room, many people outside this room and across our region. Uh, and there are a lot of big challenges that we face as a region. Certainly, I want to thank um, tourism, the Shaw Centre, and everyone who is working hard to revitalize our downtown and drive more flights into our airport because that is absolutely critical for our region long term economically. When we look at some of the other challenges, I mentioned talent. I know KNBA is a major partner in talent, as are the post secondaries and so many other organizations. One of our goals is to expand the talent pool here in Ottawa. It's critical for our scaling companies, for our multinationals. We've got amazing international students that come to our post-secondaries. How can we make sure that we have the right opportunities to keep them anchored here so that we're growing our talent pie and we're not sharing talent and poaching from one another that we're bringing in new talent uh, and brain trust into this region? And that was certainly a big focus of the report yesterday. The brain trust that's here in Ottawa is exceptional. We're looking at moonshots, opportunities to take some of the incredible sector-specific technologies and expertise that we have, whether it's telecom, next generation network, software, hardware, smart mobility, AV, AR, there's just so many SaaS, life sciences. How can we take the collaboration that exists in this room and across this region and look at the convergence of different technology sectors and scientific disciplines to propel innovations and solutions that will help the world, that will not only be tech for commercial purpose, but tech for good? That's a major area of focus. Moonshots in the area of defense, the opportunity to scale up AreaX.0 to support greater opportunity for the startups and scale-ups that we're serving, as well as for the multinationals that are bringing customers here that are looking to enhance the sales of their innovations and the impact of those innovations, the exports. There's so many opportunities that exist. None of this will occur. We won't attract the right talent. We won't retain the right talent if we're not working together as one community and helping each other to find the right home, the right opportunity, the right differentiation and growth path for the talent that we seek. And certainly international talent attraction is absolutely critical. And I know that's a goal that's shared together with our friends at KNBA. Uh, as well as the post-secondaries. So to me, collaboration is the future. There are so many challenges ahead that if we don't work together, we won't be able to harness the true power of our resources, our expertise, the funding that we're privileged to have together with that across the community. We've got to put it to work in novel ways, in better ways than we ever have before, given the magnitude of the challenges that we face. Collaboration is key. Here, here. Thank you for that, Sonia. So we are just about out of time, and I want to ensure that we create a call to action for the community leaders assembled with us today. So ladies, can you each provide one key action you would like our audience to take in support of Think Ottawa's goal? So why don't I start with you, Sonia? Well, I'm gonna give the Think Ottawa floor to my colleagues. I'm gonna say um, Think Ottawa is part of a larger suite of tools and assets and resources that are available to you, not just from Invest Ottawa, but from Hub 350 and a host of other collaborators that we have. I am gonna say please drop into Why Ottawa and Work in Ottawa. The reason that I'm able to speak so passionately about all of those important stats and put them into context is because I am deeply passionate about them and we promote them everywhere we go to drive job creation, investment, and opportunity into the region. You can find job boards there, opportunities to actually take messaging forward. We have a global expansion team. If you have teams that are coming in from around the world that can work together with you at no cost to create new opportunities to help get things done faster, whether it's helping to soft land a company, whether it's helping them to introduce different members of the ecosystem, different opportunities they can engage in commercially. 
why Ottawa, think Ottawa, and of course, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I think I know everyone in this room, so you all know me and, uh, and how to find me, but we're here to help to achieve Ottawa's goals as a community. Leslie. I would just leave you with, you know, if next time you're hopping on a plane and you're heading out of town to a conference to just think, hmm, maybe I should just chat with the organizers and see what this would look like if we wanted to bring it to Ottawa. Um, the Ottawa Tourism website uh, has all of our contact information, my colleague Emily, myself, my colleague Stephanie also here. Uh, any one of us can help you. Call my president. Uh, we're all here to support you. Um, so don't feel alone if you do. I, I won't lie, it is some work to, to plan a conference, but, uh, but we can do a lot of the heavy lifting on the front end. So please get in touch. Uh, we have a lot of new infrastructure hopefully coming online in Ottawa and the more we bring here the more visitors the, the you know the more tax dollars uh, that we create um, the more we'll see in our destination in our city which also helps you to attract talent we've got new super hospitals coming on online that you know we need doctors uh, to come to this region to come and work so I think if we all sort of do a little bit of our part then um, we'll make this uh, an even better city than it is today so thank you for having us today. And Nina. Well, I think my two colleagues said it very well, but I would just suggest maybe we should all be a little bit more curious. So the next dinner party that you're at or the next Saturday night you have people over to your house or you're, you're in a restaurant with friends and family and, and networking, just, just be curious and ask people what associations they belong to because we all belong to one type of an association and there is an association for everything. So it, I, just, I just recommend, and myself included, is to be curious and ask those questions and, and my contact details as well if you need any help with respect to, to and Leslie said it, don't worry about size, shape or what fits. That's our job to help you with that, but I, I can be contacted on LinkedIn or through our website as well. So thank you for being here today. We want to thank you all for being here, and we want to thank you, Nina Kressler, President and CEO of the Shaw Center, Leslie McKay, Vice President, Meetings and Major Events, Ottawa Tourism, and Sonia Shorey, Vice President, Strategy, Marketing and Communications, Invest Ottawa. I knew that the time was going to fly by. We are out of time. We want to thank you all for being here, and thank you so much for this great conversation. It is just really the beginning here of what Think Ottawa is doing. And I believe we will be number one on that list of the, you know, the best here, here. city to live and to work in. Ottawa really has that. It just requires that collaborative effort. And it was great to collaborate with you all today. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.